Shut up and sit down. Well, hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Master the NEC, where we talk about the National Electrical Code and all things electrically related. My name is Paul Abernathy, your host as always, and welcome to the podcast. Now, hopefully this is the first time that you've listened to our podcast. Our podcast is available on all of your popular uh, podcast listening platforms like Spotify, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, iTunes, Apple Podcast, all those platforms. And hopefully when you listen to it, you get something out of it, whether you pick get a little piece of it or something out of it that, that teaches you something or you learn something new that you'll, you'll go on and do us a favor and give us a thumbs up and let other people know how you enjoy the podcast so that, you know, we get those ratings up and we get more people that has access to our podcast. So, so But I do want to thank you for taking the time to listen. And uh, we got a great show. We're going to talk a little bit about the fast tracks questions in the competency review because I get quite a few questions about the competency review portion of the fast tracks program uh, when it comes to the questions. Now, a lot of the times you've got the reading material is designed to teach you how to answer the questions in the competency review. And we're not going to give you all the answers in the, in the reading material. We're going to give you the tools. So, for example, if we were doing definitions, and I use this example, if we're going to do definitions, we're going to give you questions in the competency, but they're not all going to be based on just the reading material. The reading material is designed to teach you the basic fundamental definitions, for example, of Unit 2 uh, within our Fast Tracks program. Now I'm talking about the 20, 2020 edition. It's going to teach you the basic fundamentals, and, of course, one of the rules of studying the National Electrical Code in our program is I'm a big believer in you have to have reading material. Now, we keep it short and concise with graphics and try to make it easy to convey the message, at least starting out early in the Unit 2 and Unit 3 type of concepts. But we're not going to cover every definition because there's just not enough time in the program to do that. So the concept here is to teach you to start going to the definitions, Article 100. So we'll give you definitions, and we'll put something in the brackets, and the brackets will tell you to go to Article 100 for this definition, and you're going to go to 100 and read this definition. Um, but one thing to remember is it's, it's broken down very specifically in our program. For example, if you're in Unit 2 and you're doing the competency test, you know that all the questions that are in that are going to come from or be revolving around Article 100. Now, as you get further on, it's going to be very specific to residential or commercial or certain calculation. Uh, but when it comes to the base units, which we use, I should tell you, we use to start figuring algorithms about what you know and what you don't know so that we can kind of see what the students' learning patterns are going to be because we track all these things in the program. That's why it takes us a little bit to set up the LMS before we issue your, your keys because we're tracking all this stuff. And there are some qualifying questions in Unit 2 and Unit 3 that are going to help us set what's called a baseline. So, I, again, I just recently had to explain that to somebody, and I figured I'd go on and do a podcast and explain what we do. It's, it's fairly sophisticated in its concept of what we're trying to do when we take certain numbers. So, for example, if you're looking at competency unit two, it's all about definitions. And as you read through it, you'll notice that there are some questions that might not be specifically addressed in the reading material. There's a reason for that, because these are definitions. We're trying to get you to use the NEC in conjunction with the reading material. We do not believe that you can use just the course material alone. It's going to help you, and you're going to get a lot of code references, and you're probably going to be able to have no problems with just using the course material, but that's not what we're trying to do. And you've probably heard me say this in other videos and other things. What we're trying to do is to get you to use course material, and when references are made, you're actually going to go to the National Electrical Code. Now, this is part of our ballistic training, and so um, when you do it, you read it, you hear it, and you get direction to go to the code book, and, and once you're in the code book, you're going to uh, look up any reference that's given in the course material. There's a reason for that, because it, it pushes you in and out of the National Electrical Code so that you're not just watching a video, you're not just uh, reading something, but you're interacting with the National Electrical Code, because... Ultimately, that's what you're going to have to have during your exam. You're not going to have the course book material. Uh, we obviously also can't cover every single thing in a course material. It would be too long. 
So we cover the core fundamental things, but we also test you in competency based on the core fundamentals of that unit. Uh, So by doing so, we're not going to just test you on what you read, even though the majority of it will come from it. It's teaching you a method to find the answer. So uh, it's, it's hard to explain it in simpler terms than that, but basically the competency review is testing your competency based on what you read and how you interacted with the NEC so that when you're reading these competency reviews you ought to be, and you're doing these questions, you're going to also be able to utilize your code book and search for these questions. Now, we're not looking for 100% here. We're looking to try to get scores that are averaging above 85%. I mean, that's the goal, and I'm pretty tough on students. I, I, I'm very critical. I'm like, look, you got to get this score up. You got to get the score up. If your scores are below 60%, do this unit again. Uh, ultimately, you know, your, your grade doesn't matter in this program, obviously. Your grade matters on the exam. It doesn't really matter when it comes to whatever you're getting on this program. Okay? This program, for as far as grading, is pretty irrelevant. However, there are certain triggers. And one of the triggers is when you are getting below 60% or in the low 70s even, it's a good sign that you're going to struggle on an exam. So we are going to give you competency questions that are going to be struggling and make you have to go into the code book and look them up. So what it's doing here, and this is why it's like no other course, we're not giving you all the answers. We're teaching you a process for you to be able to find the answers. We're forcing you to maneuver through the code book. So it's done for a reason. Now, if I were to, you can find all the answers in the course material. And what we mean by that is you can find the path to finding the answers through the repetitive process of the course reading material and following all those chevrons and going and looking up every code reference, you're going to get more familiar with using the NEC. When you get to the competency test, it's exactly what it is. It's not a review of the unit. It's a competency test. Yes, some of the questions are going to come straight from the unit, but some of the questions are going to make you have to use your code book. That's what we're here for. So I tell students all the time who, who do get bummed out frequently um, because, again, I'm a, I'm a blunt instructor. I mean, I tell you, you're going to have to get your scores up. You have to do this. Um, but I don't do it to be mean or malice or, or, or upset anybody. I don't want to – I'm really here to motivate you. And basically I'm saying, look, we need to see these scores above 85%. Now, if you get an a 80 or 81, or okay, you're, you're going to be successful, but we're here to push you constantly make you stop and think, well, let me print this out first, because you can print out every competency test first, then answer them independently. Uh, There's plenty of space on the left side for you to put your NEC reference in your answer. And then once you've filled it all out, then you can go online and start putting it in the, the, the LMS system, and you can get your grade. But the point is, if we gave you all the answers to just what you read, then you're not going to get any any, any real immersion out of it. There's a reason for our math madness, the way we do this, okay? So um, if you're struggling, that's okay because that really means you're pushing yourself and you're learning. And the more you read it, the more you understand it, the more that you immerse yourself in it, you're going to get better at it. And that's the whole purpose of the program. That's why it's not just the same as sitting and watching DVDs. That's why it's not just the same as answering regular code questions. It, it's so hard to explain what goes into this and why we have Unit 2 and Unit 3 to set our algorithms because we're really monitoring your activity and find where your weakness is. And it's going to be real evident whether your weakness is calculations and, or your weakness is code lookup. You're going to run out of time during an exam, right? So we're focusing on this. And once you start getting up into the competency reviews and you start getting into the upper units like Unit 11, which is pretty tough unit, by the way, Um, eight, unit eight is tough. Unit 11 is tough and unit 13 is tough because those units are fundamentally geared towards load calcs. And I need you to focus on those. Now, if you do poorly on those, but you do really great on the other units that are code lookups, that's okay. It does identify where you need, where you need some help. And so we have our Wednesday night class that's available to our exam prep students and we do this, uh, the live Zooms, 
and we're going to answer these tough questions. So uh, typically some weeks we do a scheduled training program, like maybe uh, single family dwellings, multifamilies, but then sometimes we do what's called open Q&A, and this is very similar to what I used to do on my Wednesday night public uh, live stream, uh, except for now it's closed only to Fast Track students as well as um, the people that are supporters over in our YouTube channel, which we have what's called a general and a VIP level. They get access to the Wednesday night um, Zoom calls where we go over these type of things. And they can bring their questions. If there's something in their unit they don't understand, there's a, there's a question in their competency they just don't get, or maybe it's one they say, look, I read the course material. I can't find the answer, which we expect that. But then they can't find the answer in the NEC, even though the, the unit gives you the tools to know how to look things up and put you in the right area of the code. There might be something that we ask you on the competency review, which we feel that you should be able to answer based on the work you've done in the unit, whether or not it told you the answer directly. That, that's the method to the madness. Okay? If you wanted a course that just you read the material and answers were all based on just what you read, this isn't the course for you. It isn't. Okay? We're teaching you the tools to find the answers, but also giving you the core fundamental basic things that are low-hanging fruit that we want to make sure that when you're doing an exam, for example, you're going to do the three-wave technique. And the first one, you're going to answer questions right off the bat that you know. Okay, Those are the type of things that we're going to cover in the reading material. The other stuff, we're going to expect you to look it up and use your code book. Okay? So I just want you to know there's a method to the madness. There's a reason why we do it this way. Um, students who get you know lower scores, um, don't get frustrated. Don't get upset at yourself. Um, just plug away because if you get above 60, don't worry. We're going to give you the answers and you're expected to go back into that unit and really read the question and then the response by us. And you're going to say, oh, now I get it. That's all about the immersion process. So we're not about just pumping out DVDs. We're not just about doing the books. We're about an immersion experience. We're going to have reading material. You're required to read. I'm a big believer in that you have to read it to comprehend it because your exams are going to be written material. You have to read it, and you have to be able to, once you read it, say to yourself, what did this question just ask me? And that way you can focus on answering it. And that all starts with reading comprehension, not just sitting back and watching DVDs and listening to other people's opinion. That's not going to really work here in the real world. Right. Um, you might get lucky enough to, to pass, but there are certain things. And of course, we don't teach you just to pass an exam. We teach you the skills to be able to look something up. And the good news is every unit is very specific on a topic so that you know that the answers are within the scope of that topic. Now, again, they might not be all in the reading material because at the competency, we're not testing your competency on the reading material. We're testing your competency on the reading subject matter. That's the concept. And we understand if everybody got 100s, then we're doing something wrong, okay? And we get our share of guys that do that, and they're just really good at it. But the reality is we do know the scores will fluctuate. Some of my greatest students that we've had go through this program for the last couple years uh, struggled on Unit 8, 11, and 13, just like everybody else struggles. It's okay, it's okay to struggle. This is a tough topic to begin with. But the reason you struggle is because the questions we ask are very tough questions. And they usually are tougher than anything you're going to see on an exam. So take your time. Focus on them. Don't get lost into the weeds or the minutia. Um, but once you start getting up in our program around Unit 12, 13, 14, you should be also doing the practice questions. And there are a couple errors in those questions. I don't write those questions. They're a package that has been we purchase and add to our program. Um, but I like that because out of 1,000 questions, you might have three or four that are a little bit wonky. And that came from translation between 2017 and 2020 that the original author of the questions kind of – got those screwed up and they've been submitted for change for the next cycle, but that's okay because I have students that will find these and they'll email me about it. And I'm like, that is awesome. And what's awesome about it is it's almost like me putting little hidden eggs in there. You know, Hey, if you can find the questions that are, that are wrong, 
You know, and I'll tell you right now, if you can find, there's a couple questions that are just, just wrong. If you can find them, email me and let me know. Let me know the question and I'll send you something as a, as a, as a good job. You found the, the hidden Easter eggs because there are a couple, um, but they're, again, the overall overwhelming amount of questions, that is pretty low amount. So, um, you know, as with anybody that writes questions, things like that, you're bound to have that come up. I've seen it in everybody's published question material. There's no perfect questions out there. Uh, but you also have states that put out really wonky questions as well. So um, I think there's still a great collection of questions. Uh, there's a final exam. There's 20, uh, 25 question exams. You should be doing those. Once you get to about unit 11 in our program, rather than 12, you should be each week doing at least one or two of those practice exams. You definitely, and you need to be focused on scores that are 85% or higher, okay? Um, or I like to say over 85% because I use 85 as a baseline, but um, don't get discouraged. Take it again. If you get below 85 or 85 or below, take take it again. Don't worry about it. It doesn't matter that the questions are the same. It's all about the repetition, okay? It's all about doing it, um, that type of thing. Um, I do encourage students a lot of times when they're doing the practice exams and they get one wrong, don't look at the answer. Just go to them because you're going to redo it again, and I don't want you to know the answer yet. I'd go through the test, answer them. Don't look at the answers at the bottom because it does give you the answers. Don't do that. Move on to the next question. Just answer your questions. If it's, if it's right or wrong, it'll let you know. And just kind of don't look them up. Go on to the next one. Um, at least do one wave through like that. If you get above 85%, uh, then, then there you go. But if you if you get below 85% or 85 or below, then you really want to, you know, really want to do that quiz again, right? All right. So anyway, that's all I've got for this episode. I just want to kind of give people the, the, uh, the little bit of understanding, a little bit more of our competency tests and what we do and what the concept behind them is. Um, there are questions that will be mixed in there that are just, uh, they're based on the content that you studied but they're not based on anything specifically written in the material. Why? Majority are. There's a mixture. There's a majority of the questions are, and there's the questions that are not because they're in the same area of the code, and we're trying to push you to be able to find those in the code book. It's done for a reason. Whether you like it or not, it's the way the program was designed, and it's been very successful for people. And it, it I can tell you right, it's been pretty much right on. Any student that I know that has failed an exam, if you go back and look at their algorithm and you go back and look at their scores, they got really, really low scores. And it's because they weren't ready to take the exam. They didn't hit the program like they were sh- are supposed to. They didn't go back and do those units. When I tell you when you get below 60, you got to redo it. They didn't do it. So you got to question whether or not the desire to get the license is really there. If I'm telling you the secret and you just have to go back and read the material again and retest uh, and redo your unit reviews and things like that, then why would you not do that? You know what I'm saying? So, again, you, you have to look within yourself. Uh, it's all about you. The course is just material, but it's all about your dedication to passing and, and being successful. So hopefully you got something out of today's lesson or, uh, I guess, chat about exam prep. Uh, again, if you're interested in our Fast Tracks program, check it out over on uh, the um, masterthenec.com. You'll see up at the top, it'll say exam prep. Click it, and you can watch a DVD on the program. kind of gives you a, a, well, not a DVD, a demo, and it'll kind of talk a little bit about what the program's all about. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to us at info, I-N-F-O, at masterthenec.com and ask your question. Of course, we have a live chat feature right on the website, so you can ask your question right there from the website if you ever get confused. All right? All right, folks, Till next time, stay safe. God bless. Shut up and sit down. Oh, my God.